right, today's lesson is module three, lesson 14 on ordered pairs, and lesson 15 on locating ordered pairs on the coordinate plane. Both lessons have this word ordered pair in them. Does anybody remember or know what ordered pair is? What's an ordered pair? Ooh, think back. What is it? Okay, I hear some vocabulary words in there. I see the word here, coordinate plane. Let's remember what a coordinate plane is. This is an example of a coordinate plane. A grid, dots, points, plotting. Somebody said x-axis, somebody said y-axis. So does anybody remember what the word ordered pair means? Pair, pair meaning two, meaning a set. Like a set of two numbers, and you find that exact pinpoint on the graph. Beautiful. Excellent. It's a pair of numbers, a set of two numbers, that will help us find a point on the grid. Exactly. So a lot of times we'll see it written like this. So that tells us we could find a point at 2, 3 on a grid. And we're going to get into that more in a minute. So it's a pair of numbers. So pair meaning two numbers. So what is the name of that first number? The first number in ordered pair is called the first coordinate. Does anybody remember a different name from elementary school? What that might, might have been called? Not the x-axis. Because an x-axis is a huge number line. But you're on the right track. Well, I, sixth period, totally remembered this word. I'm kind of surprised. You may hear it referred to as the x-coordinate. So if you want to write that in parentheses next to it or below it, you might hear that term. Now, the top. Don't get confused by this. Anybody want to try to guess what the second one is called? A little tricky. What do you think? Y That's the old name that you might hear it used by. But what do you think the second number is called? The second coordinate. Second coordinate. Another name for it is also the y coordinate. So if you hear those two terms used, they both mean the same thing. But now we're getting to first coordinate and second coordinate. Even it's simple. We're going with both. I'm going with both. You're going with both. I am. That's not universal. We discussed it. Lebowski's <laughs> law. Lands. Okay, so an ordered pair, ordered pairs are like a set of directions. They indicate where to go in one direction and then indicate where to go in the second direction. I forgot my little picture of an elevator. Remember, you have to walk before you can get in the elevator to go up or down. Just like you have to walk or run before you can jump, or in my case, trip. Okay? So you're going to go across horizontally before you can go up and down vertically. I heard of another way. You can walk and try to climb up the mountain. You can walk and, and climb up the mountain or walk and go down a tunnel. That's right, Petros. Very good. Whatever is going to help you remember it is what you should go with. Okay? Run before you can go in the walk before you can go up and down the elevator. Run before you can jump. Whatever works. Okay, so let's take a look at this coordinate grid. And practice finding points on the coordinate grid using the ordered pair. So this is the point on the x-axis, and that's our point on the y-axis. What I love about, what are the things along the map? Alphabetical order. Nice, neat, ordered. So we're going to follow an alphabetical order. Along the x-axis first, horizontally, let's go over 1, and then up 4. And what point is that? Anybody not sure how we got up? 
Does order matter? Look at the next order pair. We have 4, 1. Is that also going to be F? No. Remember, the first coordinate tells us where to go first. So we have to go over 4, up 1, and what do we get to? C. What about C? 5, negative 2. What point is that going to be? Over 5, down 2, G. D, Jennifer, excuse me, D, as in, right, E, agree or disagree? And why are we flipping pages? We're already on that? We're that far away? Yeah. Okay. Agree or disagree with her answer? Who heard her? You heard her? And? Agree. Now, what do we notice? Our x coordinate or our first coordinate is zero. What do we notice about a point and where it sits? When the first coordinate is zero, where is it? Not on the y coordinate, on the y axis. y axis. Remember, this number line that's going vertically, that's our y axis. This number line that's going horizontally is our x axis. If you can read it. So whenever your x coordinate is zero, it sits on the y axis. Okay? They're throwing in decimals here. Come on. Be careful with this one. Over 8.5, up to 8. What's that one? 5 and 4.2. Go over 5. Now there's two of them here. Which would make more sense? The H or the D? 4.2, is that closer to 4 or is 4.2 closer to 5? What is that closer to? It's closer to 4. So H is closer to 4. And 0. Now we'll leave at 0 again. So if my X coordinate is 0, I know it's going to be sitting on the, everybody, y-axis. So over 0, up 9 is what letter? Everybody? E. e. Any questions on any of these? Yeah. This F, over 8.5, up to 8. It's really confusing that these have letters and we're looking for letters. That's confusing me. <laughs> like, which F do you mean? Let's look the other way now. They're giving us the point, and we have to find the ordered pair. What do we have to make sure we have when we're writing our ordered pair? When you're writing an ordered pair, what do you have to have? Excellent. Parentheses and a comma. Giving someone else a parenthesis. So M. Going along the X axis first. How far over am I going? And then up to, so parentheses, 5, comma, 7, close parentheses. Don't be, you will lose points if you don't have those parentheses there, because we need to know they're part of a pair, they're part of a set. N. What's N, Heather? So now wait a second. Now we have the 0 as our second coordinate. If 0 is our second coordinate, what do we notice when there's a 0 there? Where does it sit? You're on fire today. Love it. I'm going to give somebody else a term. When the y coordinate is 0, it sits on the x-axis. See how that works? Opposite like that. P? He said P. Uh, why isn't everybody raising their 
raising their hands. Come on, everybody needs to be involved. Yep. Zero, six. These ordered pairs mean different things, so order matters. Q? Over two, up three. R? Zero, three is sitting on the y-axis, so that means our x is zero. S? Good. P? U? D. Questions on any of those? All right, so let's summarize this a little bit. Let's take a look at what we've learned. We already finished lesson 14. So the order of numbers in an ordered pair is important because the ordered pair should describe one location in the coordinate plane. The first number called the first coordinate or the y coordinate, if you want to put that in your lesson summary on the problem set, if you want to add that, location uh, describes the location in the horizontal direction. The second number called the second coordinate or the y coordinate describes the location in the vertical direction. Okay? You got to run before you can jump or run before you can trip. Okay? Write this down in your notes also. This is an example of your ordered pair. X comma Y. Alphabetical order. Nice and easy to remember. Yeah? No, because usually I trip into a hole and fall down. Because I wouldn't trip. I'm not like a clutch. There'd have to be like a pothole or something. Buy that? <laughs> The road is terrible now from all the snow. I had fallen a pothole. Whoops, this didn't erase. Okay, let's take a look at some vocabulary. Lesson 15. We're going to skip example one and jump down to example two. I did the same thing. Jump down to example two uh, on the page. All points on the coordinate plane are described with reference to the origin. What is the origin and what are its points? Think of origin, original, beginning. So what is the origin? We know where we would find it. Let's go back and look at this coordinate grid. I'll give you a hint. The origin is here. The origin is here. What is it? Um, give me more. Give me more. Where it starts? Absolutely. But why do we start there? What happens there that we made that the starting point? Where what meets? Exactly. Where? Okay, so let's write this. The origin. Okay, we're writing this down. All complete sentences. Capital period, just like ELA, social studies. The origin is the point. Where the X axis. And the y-axis intersects. So what would the ordered pair be? What would the ordered pair be for the origin? Right. Zero comma zero. Because basically, our coordinate plane is made up of your x-axis, and your x-axis is what? What is your x-axis when we look at this coordinate plane? That's just a what? 
What is that? I heard somebody mumble it. Raise your hand and say it. Beautiful. Horizontal number line. And what is our y-axis? Everybody? Vertical number line. So basically, when we intersect our horizontal vertical, a horizontal vertical, <laughs> when we intersect our horizontal number line with our vertical number line, we're creating this big, beautiful coordinate plane. Okay. So now we want to find points on this coordinate plane. We use... To find a point on a coordinate plane, we use... We just spent the first half of the period on it. What do we use? How do I find a point? How did I find all these points? What did I use? Thank you. Very good. We use ordered pairs. Order is important, so on the coordinate plane, we use the form. What? You copied this into your notes, too. What tells us the order? What's your basic form? If we don't know what the numbers are, we use... Right. The first coordinate represents the point's location from zero on the... Everybody? x-axis. Notice how it's hyphenated. The second coordinate represents the point's location from zero on the y-axis. Okay? All points from zero. Everything we did the first half, the module is now coming forward. It's number line. Yes. Oh, no, that's just a sloppy x, and I apologize for that. Because that's an x and a y. All right, so when we take our horizontal number line and vertical number line, we divide this into how many sections? How many sections did we create? Sorry, I wasn't trying to freeze you out. Everybody? Four. Four. Does anybody know what those each section is called? Well, if you ride one of those motorcycle things that's got four wheels on it, that's called a quad. Because quad means four. So how many sections do we see here? Four. So each one is called a quadrant. Okay? Now in elementary school, you probably only worked with the first quadrant. Because in elementary school, you only worked with positive number lines. But now in sixth grade, the first half of the module, we added on negatives onto our number line. So that's how we extended it. You may have done negatives in elementary school before they started changing uh, the curriculum. Okay? Very important. Each quadrant is labeled with Roman numerals. Quadrant 1, quadrant 2, quadrant 3, and quadrant 4. Counterclockwise. Okay? So, the, um, like we just discussed, the, we're showing negatives now. That's how we have the four values. So, what I would want to do right now is take a look at this number line, uh, at this quadrant. See? Let's take a look at this. On your notes, we're on top of page 56. Example 3. They want you to label the different quadrants. So label it 1, 2, 3, and 4 counterclockwise. Let's take it to the next step. What do I know about my x and my y coordinates in quadrant 1? Now, if you notice, this is, oh, by the way, this is something that was totally upset me when I looked at this note, you know, pages. What's missing from your coordinate grid? What makes the coordinate grid? What are the two key things that make the coordinate grid? The x-axis and the y-axis, are they labeled? No! Please label that. Make sure that you have your x-axis labeled and label your y-axis. 
But getting back to my original question, an ordered pair in quadrant one, my x is going to be positive or negative? All these numbers on the x-axis in quadrant one are positive. And what are all of the numbers on the number line on the y-axis? Positive. So add that on your notes, that your x and your y are both positive when you're in quadrant one. What do we know about the x-coordinate and the y-coordinate when they're in quadrant two? Look at your x-axis. On your x-axis, all those numbers are going to be negative. But all your y's are going to be positive. So negative x and positive y means it's going to be in quadrant 2. What do we know about the x-coordinate and the y-coordinate in quadrant 3? What are they going to be? They're both negative because we're working with the negative side of the number line. What about in quadrant four? What's going to happen? Excellent. Very good. So please have all four order pairs also written on your notes. That's something you definitely want to study. And this part of your notes is definitely going to help you with your homework tonight. Okay, so locate and label each point described by the ordered pairs below. Indicate which of the quadrant the points lie in. So we have to number them and label them and identify the quadrant. Well, first of all, oh, what's missing from that coordinate grid? What's missing? That's from my axis, so please label the x and y axis on that coordinate grid on your notes. I have it labeled here. Here's your x axis and your y axis. So A is over 7 up 2. That's A. So what quadrant is that in? What quadrant is that in? That's in quadrant one. So we're going to write a Roman numeral one for our answer. If it helps to label the quadrants, go ahead and do that around your coordinate grid. Negative three down four is in what quadrant? What quadrant is that? Negative, um, over 3, down 4. So what quadrant is that in? Fourth quadrant. Sometimes you'll see them written individually like that. Sometimes you'll see them connected like that. 1, negative 5 is what quadrant? Over 1, down 5, negative 5. Based on this information that we put here, we shouldn't even have to plot them. We should be able to identify them based on um, whether the X and Y are positive and negative. But plotting definitely helps. So 1, negative 5 is what quadrant? Negative 3, 8. Come on. Over negative 3 along the X axis and up positive 8 on the Y axis. Yep, yeah, second quadrant. Negative 2, negative 1. What quadrant has both coordinates as negative numbers? Quadrant yeah. 3. Yes, sir. Most definitely have to, have to, have to, have to, have to be. Has to be in Roman numerals. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. Because that's how it is. I guess so that you don't get confused with the number lines and the points. So now we actually already talked about number six. So let's take a look at question six. We're skipping five and jumping down to six. 
It asks, do you see any similarities in the points within each quadrant? And that's what we talked about here when we looked at the positive and negatives. So if we look at them, we notice that quadrant 1 contains both positive values, a positive x and a positive y. Quadrant 2, the first value is negative, but the second quadrant is a positive value, negative x, positive y. Quadrant 3 contains both negative values. Quadrant 4, the first value is a positive, but the second coordinate is a negative. And we also talked about how if a point lies on the x-axis, then there is no quadrant. If the point lies on the x-axis, the second coordinate, or the y-coordinate, will be a zero. And therefore, it's in no quadrant. When it's on the axis, no quadrant. And if the point lies on the y-axis, which coordinate is zero? The... The opposite, which is the x, okay? So again, no coordinate if it's laying on the x-axis. So right now you're going to copy these six points on number six in your notes. And I highly recommend studying this page, maybe making flashcards, making notes. Your end module assessment is next Wednesday. That's a little over a week. So the, these, uh, the vocabulary we discussed today... And these points are definitely something that you want to study. Okay, so to summarize today's lesson, I love this graphic. I would go print out the notes and print out this graphic and study it. The quadrants are labeled counterclockwise, starting with quadrant 1, quadrant 2, quadrant 3, and quadrant 4. And again, it tells you the values of your positive and negative numbers. Uh, yeah, of your X, I'm sorry, it tells you the values of your X and Y coordinates. Okay? So to summarize, the X axis and Y axis of the coordinate planes are number lines that intersect at zero on each number line. And what do we call that? Where they intersect at zero, what is that called? Good, I want you to write that on your notes. Origin. This is on the lesson summary on your problem set. The axes create four quadrants on the coordinate plane. And points in the coordinate plane lie either on an X, either lie on an axis, or in one of the four quadrants. Remember, if it sits on an axis, it doesn't qualify as being in one of the quadrants. Now, if you take a look at your problem set, page 58, Number one, you could do right on your paper. Number two has to be done on loose leaf because you're explaining it. So you might as well be doing your homework on your loose leaf. So number one should be done on loose leaf. Number two is done on loose leaf because they don't give you enough room. Now number three, look at that teeny tiny grid they give you. I would go cross-eyed and probably a little nauseous trying to plot points on that. So either go online and print out better graph paper or you could take some graph paper or I'll try to put on the blog a link to better graph paper. Now you're going to plot all of those points for A. And then see what do they have in common. So again, on loose leaf, you have to answer 3A. Then on the same grid, plot those points for set B. See what they have in common and write, a write explain it on your loose leaf. And for C, there's five points in set C. Plot those points all on the same grid. See what they have in common and write your explanation. It's going to sound very familiar to what we did in class, so you totally want to make sure you have your notes out when you're doing your homework. Okay? And four, again, they give you a new grid. You don't necessarily have to plot. Actually, you do. I apologize. You are plotting. If you want to do it on that grid, you may. If you want to use fresh grid, fresh draft paper, you can do that because I think that's a little bit small. Okay, and don't forget there is extra help tomorrow to go over this or to go over your tests.